Uh, Alright, first flight with the new clouds, and I've set it to overcast and rain, and, well, you can't really see anything but <laughs> the fog, so let's uh, kick this up. See how this looks as we get up into the air. Just keep it on center line. And rotate. Gear up. Tell you what, the rain looks a lot better already. <laughs> there's, there's the ground. Don't even have any fog set. It's just... It's just gone. Sun's in that blur somewhere. You see little bits floating past. How thick are these clouds? Ooh, there's a gap. I'm going to fly into that. It's that way between layers. That's really cool. So we've got a layer just above us, we're flying into a gap. There's the ground we can now see. That is pretty. And the rain appears to be less here. All but stopped, I think. Alright, let's punch on up through to the other side of this layer then. Those clouds look absolutely great. Okay, up, 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 and through the next layer. You can see that layer just in front of us, you can see I'm climbing on it, that's a strange sensation actually. In the past I'm used to games where the clouds higher up just kind of stop existing and they're attached to the skybox. These are not the case, that's really cool. Finally up at the top. And that is quite pretty. We're just coming up on this cloud here. Now this is one of the things that always irked me about Microsoft Flight Simulator. You never had a jet fast enough to actually enjoy flying through the clouds, you'd always stall out. We're up at uh, 33, 34,000 almost now. Reaching the limits of the clouds. And you can still see the ground in places. Just through the gaps in the clouds. Massive upgrade over the old uh, DCS overcast effect. Just surf on the top of this cloud. I think this has been far really worth the wait. Right, let's pick a hole in the clouds, one over here. As we get clear of this one. This really is going to change the way you think. So there's a hole there, so let's fly over that. I'm going to look directly down and see what we can see through the cloud layer. You can imagine using a targeting pod trying to peek and look through the gaps. Yeah, there you go, there's your window. As we fly past yet another cloud. Let's just roll down onto it. Straight ourselves out. Going from the top layer, middle layer. That is gorgeous. Look at that. I reckon if I come down, I can pop up in that gap just over here in a moment. And you can see the uh, the rain from the looks of it, or this mist underneath the clouds. As we come down, we've gone a little bit fast, but never mind. So there's the rain again. And now we'll punch it up onto Afterburner again, and here's that gap I was talking about. So we go straight up. Through the layer. That is really pretty. I am 
thoroughly pleased with this, and look how dark those clouds are. With the rain in them. And the brilliant sun catching everything else. That is phenomenal. Cool. This is going to be a lot of fun. A big change in how we're going to fly and play DCS in general. So let's take a quick look at the editor and what we've got in terms of options for clouds. Okay, so in the editor now, up the clouds menu. So we've got a new preset panel. We can't customize the clouds or generate our own cloud systems yet, but we've got a whole bunch of different types of clouds to choose from. So I was using Overcast and Rain Number Three for that. We can't choose uh, snow from the looks of it anymore. It's interesting. So I wonder. Let's see if I can't remember. Let's see what kind of date it is. And I'm going to see if I can't find snow now. So in a night setup, and I'm not entirely sure why we've got these giant puffs falling from the sky like that. That's a bit odd. I've got no idea why we're seeing that. That doesn't look right. That's uh, bizarre. So <laughs> we've got the snow setting turned on. It's a winter wonderland, and I... You can clearly see where the wind is coming from, right here. I'm flying into the wind right now, and as I fly around... God, this is weird. You can see now the snow blowing past us from that side. I feel like I might have the wind set a little bit high. It's a bit, uh, a bit like hyperspace, to be honest. Let's uh, get rid of the tanks and go up. Again, really nice fog effect as we're now through the clouds. Here we go. Through the clouds. That effect that's attached to my aircraft, that doesn't look so good. I need some tuning. And through the clouds. That's such a cool effect going from that storm into just pristine and beautiful. Alright, so let's dive back into the snowstorm quickly. I'm going to do it through this gap here. I want to see if the snow behaves by the same rules of the wind as the uh, rain and wind. So we've dropped down in. So we picked up the cotton balls for no apparent reason there. No snow yet. As we fly under the cloud. Oof, got hit there by some turbulence as we went under. And there is the snow. Very nice. That is gorgeous. So snow does work. It's just set the, set the uh, conditions to rain. And the temperature can low enough that snow forms. But it does look like the rendering has a bit of work to do and I'm picking up quite a bit of turbulence because those, those cotton ball puffs, they don't look right. Because they're kind of attached to my aircraft. That is really nice. Now, unfortunately, there's no thunderstorms or uh, such to pick from. Actually, if I pick a preset from here, I suspect these presets are probably all useless now. But if I say summer thunderstorm and we load that, let's see what happens, I guess. I don't expect this to work, though. So the thunderstorm preset, as predicted, doesn't appear to work. So you can see the ground has a weird fog effect on it. That's the built-in mist and fog effect, and sadly it's not terribly compatible with the clouds, I've heard. And it does look a little bit weird, the transition between fog and cloud. That shouldn't be quite so harsh. So that's a shame. So no thunderstorms for us for the moment. 1,000 feet, 500. There are the buildings. Yeah, so fog does sometimes work, I guess? There's the Barge Khalifa. <laughs> but it doesn't look right, no. Yes, yeah, so I think you have to not use Bog for the time being. So we've got now a dusty day with the clouds a little more broken up. The uh, buildings come out quite nicely. And a nice smooth transition into the horizon and the clouds, so that looks all good. Can a lot of have a lot of fun with this, I think going forwards, setting up different weather setups. 
Just a shame we don't have the thunderstorms, but that does look good up until here. Okay, there you go. There's the limit on the, the dust, I guess. So I don't know why, but it's painting the dust on the clouds, which is kind of pretty, but that shouldn't be happening. So I think if you are going to use a sandstorm and dust, it's probably best to have only a few clouds, if any. So it looks like dust and fog are, well, so let's just say work in progress. Because that doesn't look right. If I climb up now, the clouds are going to change colour. There you go, they lose that orange tint. They come out of the dust. That doesn't quite look right. Once you're above it though, it looks alright. Okay, I'm going to set up a time lapse and I'm going to see how these clouds look over a, uh, I don't know, an 8 to 12 hour period. And see what happens with the sunset, sunrise, and if these clouds do indeed move over time or not, or are they static entirely? Which I'm hoping it's the former. So, clouds do not move. That's a bit of a shame. They do a pretty good convincing appearance of movement, just with the edges kind of floating and evaporating, which looks really great, but they don't move. But I don't think over the course of general gameplay you're going to notice this, but it's definitely something I want to see added in the future, so it's a shame we don't have that right now, but hey, it's only the first release. The other thing we want to have a quick look at before we finish up is the performance, and so far I've been quite impressed with it. So I've been running the clouds, everything you've seen so far, on Ultra settings, and it's cost me a little bit of performance, and you can see on screen here the uh, comparison for the two. And on Ultra, your GPU is going to take a little bit of a hit on performance, and it's not been that bad to be honest. I mean, I had a little bit of overhead on mine, I haven't got the graphics set up as high as I could be, but performance has been pretty good, I'm quite happy with this. It doesn't feel like it's overly taxing, and it's well worth the price of a couple frames to do it. If you're running a lesser system, I've heard people have had great success with the uh, low settings rather than the higher ones, but yeah, performance seems great, no complaints. So I think that's kind of the uh, the lot of it for my introduction and uh, and exploration of the new clouds in DCS. I am thoroughly impressed by this. I can't wait to see the gameplay implications. It's a shame we don't quite yet have uh, AI integration, no AI interaction with the clouds, so they can see through them for the time being. But once that gets added, I think it'll be a lot better. But overall, this has been really cool. I'm quite looking forward to playing with this and and just getting into flying again because it does make the sky much more 3D. You have to think about how you navigate and fly through gaps in the clouds, which is really awesome to see. So I hope you enjoyed and take care.